Hello and welcome to Perspective. I'm Farooq Petafi. Today we are going to talk about Afghanistan peace process, if there is, uh, there is any, because uh, uh, recently we have seen that the Afghan Taliban have embarked on uh, the policy or strategy of rice bowl stratagem. Uh, the, there it, uh, it seems clear that they are not attacking cities, but they keep on attacking border areas, border crossing. They have already taken over at least six border crossings and their hold keeps on increasing. And uh, while this is going on, uh, the U.S. Uh, keeps on uh, packing up and leaving. We understand that off the late they have actually presumed that at least taken out a few sorties, few attacks, uh, air aerial bombings inside Afghanistan. But that also seems to indicate that there might not be a thaw. Uh, while this is going on, um, uh, in uh, um, uh, um, one of the Arab countries where they usually meet, um, uh, Pakistan, China, and the U.S. might also meet, uh, and then they will be discussing all these issues. Uh, on, the, on one side, this is happening. On the other side, of Afghan situation keeps on worsening. They keep on hearing about human uh, issues, human rights violations as well. From both sides, we are going to talk about all that. Uh, uh, we have already discussed what pa Prime Minister of Pakistan had to say on these matters. We are going to discuss all these matters. Before I introduce the panel, I've got in the studio and on Skype, uh, our team has prepared a report for you. Uh, let us pause that and then we are going to uh, start uh, discussing the matters. As the United States withdraws its troops from Afghanistan, challenging times are foreseeable for Pakistan. Pakistan's relationship with the United States has been characterized as transactional over the years. The Prime Minister has emphasized in no uncertain terms that Pakistan will no longer partake in a war that is not ours to fight. The chaotic and hurried U.S. troop withdrawal has left Afghanistan in a civil war-like situation, and if tensions further escalate, there may be a spillover effect of the conflict into Pakistan. Even now, many people have come to the border of Pakistan looking for refuge from the fighting. A few days ago, 46 ANA soldiers, including five officers, were given safe passage into Pakistan as they fled the advancing Taliban forces. The Inter-Services Public Relations said in a statement that the soldiers were given safe passage into Pakistan and handed over to Afghan government authorities after completing the due procedure. If tensions rise any further, we could see a large influx of refugees which could be devastating for Pakistan. Pakistan. The economy of Pakistan cannot bear the burden of the Afghan crisis any longer, and other regional and international actors will have to step in to prevent further destabilization. Most importantly, the Afghans themselves will have to take responsibility of achieving a long-standing peace and stability in their own country. Right, so you have seen the report. Now let me introduce the guests I have in the show today. I have with me in the studio Khalid Tamur Akram Saab, who is Executive Director of Center for Global and Strategic Studies. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Let me start with the studio. Let me ask the guests here uh, where we are headed, especially when it comes to the region, and what exactly should we expecting from Afghanistan. Sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, today's topic is very important as far as uh, uh, Pakistan's stance on uh, Af Afghanistan is concerned. So I will take you back uh, to 16th of July. Uh, that was a very important day because uh, uh, that was the day when uh, the new initiative was starting between South and uh, Central Asia in Tashkent, mm -hmm. and our Prime Minister was also there, and uh, President Ashraf Ghani was there, mm -hmm. and it was the initiative of uh, the Uzbek President to get together uh, everybody, and the representatives from almost 38 countries were there, including uh, uh, foreign ministers of all these South and mm -hmm. Central Asian countries. Mm -hmm. And over there, uh, President Ashraf Ghani, all of a sudden, during his speech, mm -hmm. he started accusing Pakistan and uh, of sending terrorists to Afghanistan and of destabilizing Afghanistan. And especially, uh, he himself used the word Kabul regime. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the point where uh, our Prime Minister Imran Khan had stood up and clarified to the world that it is not Pakistan, it is basically the instability within Afghanistan right. which has to be sorted out by the Afghan people themselves. Okay. Pakistan can facilitate, Pakistan can uh, 
uh, act as a, uh, along with the other regional countries, can act as a facilitator. But mm -hmm. Pakistan cannot go to Afghanistan and solve their internal mm -hmm. problems. Right. Uh, but uh, surely we must have uh, looked into, or you must have looked into the threat perception that is there. If uh, Afghanistan actually resorts to some kind of, or ends up in a civil war, there must be some threat perception in Islamabad. Uh, yes. Uh, if Afghanistan falls into the uh, civil war, yes, Pakistan will be major sufferer because uh, we have been hosting Afghans since last almost 40 years and uh, three generations of Afghans, they were born and brought up in Pakistan. So, of course, the spillover effect is going to come not only in Pakistan but in also in the other regional countries. As we have seen, uh, uh, we have, uh, the Taliban have captured the areas neighboring uh, uh, Tajikistan. They have also captured the areas neighboring uh, Uzbekistan. So the spillover effect is not only going to come in within the Pakistan, it will be on Tajikistan, Uzbekistan yeah, and other countries. Yes, in Pakistan? Pakistan we have to, uh, you mm -hmm. know, we have to, uh, now this is the time for us that we have to sit with the other regional players and we have to yeah. sort out this matter. Yeah, somebody would say that time to sit with other regional players or other stakeholders was to 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when there was time, now it seems that everything is inevitable. Biggest question at this moment, at least on my mind, is that we keep on thinking in blocks, right? Perhaps Kabul can prevail, perhaps the Taliban can prevail, perhaps the, the U.S. might change its, uh, its views. But with due respect, nothing of, uh, none of these options or possibilities are a certainty. So what happens in coming days? Is it going to be war again? Is it going to be civil war? And then my biggest concern, because for past five, six years, we have been hearing about all these processes. Uh, sometimes it was uh, Turkey-led uh, uh, process, Heart of Asia. Then it was Doha, uh, you know, and then Pakistan's own Quad as well. Why is it that after so much time, the entire region seems equally clueless? Uh, yes, it is uh, because of the uh, flawed U.S. policies in uh, Afghanistan. The U.S. had been uh, uh, there in Afghanistan since last 20 years, but they have not been able to go to the grassroots level. They have uh, been installing people uh, who have uh, uh, who do not have the grassroots level uh, uh, following okay. in Afghanistan okay. and support. Okay. Number one. Number two. Right now in Afghanistan. Taliban are gaining more and more grounds. These Taliban, mind you, they are not the Taliban of the uh, P-9-11 Taliban. Mm -hmm. They are very educated people. They are, uh, this time, they are cohesive. Uh, right. They are very educated. So why do they not show it to people that they are educated? But respecting human rights, they are not. Respecting. They are not respecting. They are not respecting. But this time, the change is that that uh, ethnic uh, Uzbek ethnic origin Taliban yeah. and uh, Tajik ethnic origin Taliban and Pakhtun ethnic origin Taliban, three of them, they are gaining grounds in their own areas. Right. And in times to come, uh, uh, whosoever would negotiate with them, you don't have to. You you will be negotiating basically with three or four factions within right. uh, that region. So and uh, very say they are cohesive and then you talk about two, three factions. Both seem competing values to me. Yes, they are cohesive on one that they have to throw out this uh, present regime. Right. On that they are cohesive. But who is going to rule once uh, they will capture Kabul? Uh, and let me also tell you, I have been talking to a few analysts in Afghanistan and uh, uh, in few other countries. Uh, Taliban, it seems that they are not in hurry to capture Kabul. Right. Because right now they know that they do not have international legitimacy. They, if they control Kabul, they don't have any money to run the country. So they would not uh, go towards Kabul. They would gain all the footholds in all the other areas. Right. And then they would let the world talk to them. Mm -hmm. And then they will uh, go towards the Kabul. Okay. And as you said that we have been seeing heart of Asia, Turkish-like process and one process and another process. And and ultimately, right. all the process ha processes have failed. It is because in some processes, U.S. Uh, opted that some countries no, should wait, stay wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that Doha has also failed? Uh, Doha process, although it is continuing, but as you have yourself said that everybody is clueless.
So what's going to happen next? I'm a student of history. I'm just questioning <laughs> why does everyone sound so clueless? They are yeah. clueless because of three reasons. The first reason is this, that number one of the, uh, the US is still not clear that what they want to do. Okay. Two, the US has involved the regional power players very late. Mm -hmm. But now Russia and China and the other uh, power players uh, which have come in um, uh, operations, yeah. they, it's very late. The, uh, the water is already now above the head. Mm -hmm. And third is that uh, now uh, U.S. wants that these power, uh, the regional powers should sit together and they should talk. As uh, just very recently uh, uh, U.S. had announced another uh, um, uh, block in which they included Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the themselves. Russia, yeah. and, uh, but they kept China and Russia out of it. Yeah. We must uh, know this thing that right now in this region, uh, under the ambit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, right. China and Russia, they both are uh, the major power drivers. Okay. So U.S. cannot uh, have any kind of solution within Afghanistan unless they take China, it decides to take China and uh, Russia both on board with them. Right. I'm uh, listening to this discussion. I'm going to actually be a little bit more selfish now. And I ask you, uh, Afghan Taliban, are they Pakistan's enemies or friends? Very tricky question. Uh, no, but you have to give me a quick answer because <laughs> I'm building up to something else. Uh, no. They're not? No, they're not. Because uh, uh, this impression we must dispel to the world that uh, to the world that Afghan Taliban are under influence of Pakistan or something like that. Right. They are not. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely. But uh, we have some kind of rapport. Uh, yes, because uh, uh, the Afghan Taliban mainly consists of uh, the Pakhtun Belt, the Pakhtun Belt, right. and those people, uh, their relatives are living in Pakistan. So they are some kind of you look at. And uh, not connectivity, but some kind of communication. Some right? kind of communication. Now, the question is, uh, my concern is not Afghan Taliban. As a Pakistani, my concern is TTP, which is hiding in Afghanistan. And within the territory now controlled by Afghan Taliban, when are they, they going to A, uh, uh, disavow them? B, when are they going to expel them? Yes, this is that red line which you were talking previously also, that this red line we have to not draw with the Afghan Taliban. Because uh, for the broader peace process, yes, we are working with the international community, we are working with US, we are working with regional countries. But as far as Pakistan is concerned, yeah. we have to look for our own interest. Yeah. And this is these are the red lines which we have to tell not only to the Taliban, but also to the international community.